Eric Stewart Show, pointing you home on WMAL. Welcome back to the Eric Stewart Show. Sid Hamid joins me with Brickfront Properties and Construction. Sid is a powerful business driver whose entrepreneurial activities and instincts and his clarity of vision have carried multiple companies through rapid and continuous growth. And I'm glad, Sid, thanks for joining me today. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Eric. Absolutely. Sid uh, had expressed interest. I had a property in northeast Washington, D.C. Uh, and uh, is that right, Sid, if I got that correctly? Was that uh, uh, seventh place? Was that northeast, I believe? Yes, yes and, and, yes. and you had some interest in the property. We, we've since sold the property, and it didn't work out for your, your purchaser to buy the property. But you are a man about uh, investing and building value. And uh, after doing part-time real estate for quite a while with great success, you decided it was just time for you to focus all your attention and efforts <clears throat> exclusively on your real-life passion. So tell us, what is your life passion? Well, to be honest, my life passion, you know, I'm going on 50 years old, is to basically to give back and to help others and to share my knowledge that I've gained over the different businesses and, and things that I've been part of. Mm-hmm. And so uh, right now, I'm, I spend a lot of time teaching and educating people on real estate investments, and especially in D.C., Maryland, Virginia area. And this is where my family and I started back in 1989. Hmm. And uh, so we started in Springfield, and we just kind of worked our way down to Alexandria and D.C. and P.G. and, and Baltimore and so forth. So what, what is it that your family started doing in 1989? Well, what we started, we bought our first house uh, in Springfield, and uh, we were asked to, we were living in some apartments, and they asked us to move. And so we, we basically bought the first house, fixed it up, and, and we lived there while we were fixing it. And uh, that turned into uh, a passion of, of doing construction and so forth. And from there, we just kept building. Then we bought another one in Arlington. Then we bought another one in Alexandria. And then we bought another one in Burke, Virginia. And, and we just kept doing it. And we saw the cash flow. We saw the freedom of time. And, uh, I mean, I enjoyed it. So I stopped doing everything else that I was doing and just stayed focused on working with contractors and working with construction and, and became the project manager of the of the different projects that we had. Mm-hmm. And uh, you've uh, now sold over 400 uh, homes or done 400 renovations, I guess, since 2001 as Brickfront Properties. Is that is that my understanding? Well, what happened is is over the years I started to work with different developers. So I worked with you know Ryan Mid Atlantic Homes, and I was in charge of of hundreds of houses. We had like. I had 80 different people working, roofers, plumbers, electricians, and they said, okay, we're going to build out this community. So I was building a lot of homes with those guys. And then when the market crashed, I mean, they laid everybody off, and, and you know, I got stuck with uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of outstanding bills. And then from there, I just went back to working with uh, institutions and buying REO properties and, and working directly with hedge funds out of New York and California and buying bulk, like 10, 20 properties at a time. And so that's basically what we've been focused on. Okay, so uh, hedge funds that have purchased uh, non-performing loans, is that what I would gather is what you're saying? Yes. So okay. right now we have a $5 million fund, and mm-hmm. so we buy non-performing assets, first liens primarily. And so the goal is to work directly with some of the mini, mini funds that are do like 50 to $100 million. Mm-hmm. And so we buy from them for anywhere from 50 to like 60 cents on a dollar. And then we'll wholesale some of them, we'll renovate some of them, and, mm-hmm. and you know, we'll just sell some of them to our other uh, investor friends. Okay. Do you see uh, any ebbing in the flow of those properties right now, or is, are we in for another wave of... Uh, of non-performing assets, just curious. Oh, yeah. There's, you know, as you know, the shadow inventory, there's been this huge conversation about shadow inventory for the last six, seven years. Mm-hmm. And what what Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac that holds most of the paper, I mean, they've been basically selling these things in large box, like $100 million, $80 million, $200 million to, like, BlackRock and, and some of the other hedge funds. So there are still a lot of assets out there that, that are still coming into the inventory. And uh, right now, the, the supply and the demand in the District of Columbia and the metropolitan area has shrunk because of the moratorium. There's been a moratorium in D.C. There was a moratorium in Prince George's community. So now that the, the governors and the mayors have lifted the moratoriums, so you're going to see a flex of inventory coming in 
uh, to the marketplace. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the moratorium's been lifted. You're going to see a lot more inventory coming to line now that, uh, that's been kind of waiting to be released. Is that correct? That's correct. Now, one of the things that, that some of these smaller hedge funds that are like $20, $30 million hedge funds, what they've done is they've decided to go in and rehab and renovate some of these homes themselves. So whereas before we would see the assets at like, you know, 47 cents, 52 cents, 58 cents on a dollar, mm-hmm. now when you look at an REO property in the MRIS system, they're already at 72 to 78 cents. So they've kind of taken a lot of the meat off the bones. So the deals are out there, but you have to have cash to be able to buy these deals at a, at a better price. So they're coming out, but you have to be connected. You have to have right relationships, right resources in order to get these deals, and you have to have the cash to execute immediately. Right, because you don't have the freedom of floating with a larger spread, meaning the, dis- the difference between what you're buying and what you can sell it for is the spread and-, and what your potential gain is going to be, including any improvements. And if you're having to pay 40% more than you were before for the same thing, you have a much thinner margin, much less risk, uh, I'm sorry, much greater risk uh, uh, for your, your finances. And and so do you think this large pool of buyers are being, are they much more competitive for the same assets? Do you have much, you know, many more hedge funds coming in and buying? So they're not buying at 50 cents themselves. They're buying at 60 cents. Exactly. Uh, Plus we have a lot of foreign international money from China, Japan, Russia. There's a lot of international money in the metropolitan area. So a lot of these folks are parking their money here. So they rather, they rather park their money in the U.S. at a 2 3% yield because of, of what's going on in China with the currency and what's going on with Russia and stuff. So there are, there's a lot of international funds that are basically just dumping their money in, in, in <clears throat> trophy assets in D.C., in New York, in mm-hmm. Chicago, in California, where, they, where these trophy assets are. And the U.S. government has created a program called the EB-5 program. Yep. And through that EB-5 program, there's a lot of at cash that's laying around D.C. area. Okay, so, uh, i got to jump a, a slightly different direction. So if I understand you with, with the – okay, the, the banks are actually getting more money for selling those assets than they were probably just a year or two years ago because of the demand from the large pool buyers who are then selling pieces of it off to you, but they're charging you more – and therefore, your spread is is shorter, but that's bullish for the banks. The banks are actually getting more money at the end of the day. Uh, the middlemen, actually, the the the, per, the original purchasers, the large pool buyers, are trying to cut that meat off the bone for you because they're having to pay more. Exactly. Qu- all right. Question. Exactly. Qu- question is this: Is this all old foreclosure stuff, or is this more recent, or is this a combination? And what would you say is the percentage? Okay, so as you know, when the loan modification program Obama created back in 2000, uh, like 2008, 2009, Mm -hmm. when they came out with the loan modification, there were a lot of people that applied for the loan modification, but since then they have gone back into the foreclosure position. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of people that got approved, but now they're back into the, the foreclosure. They're not paying their loans again. But you have to keep in mind, People's incomes are the same. It's not like people's incomes has risen 20, 30%. Right. Most people are still looking for that salary that they were getting in 2001, 2, 3, and 4. So income hasn't gone up. Employment is still, you know, it's, it's better, but it's not where it used to be. And people's confidence is still low, and people's savings accounts are still low. Hey, Sid, thanks. i got to take a break. got to come back with uh, Stuart Rosenthal in just a second. Uh, you can get information on Brickfront Properties by going to ericstewartgroup.com to our blog and, and more coming up right after this.